I was trying to say, how is this an advantage? I've never really heard that term to such, but no, okay. Out, out mid faster, they can get sight their eyes onto the enemy quite quickly. So, sure, I mean, it's worked for them wonderfully, Jim, in the sense that they won the knife round, but exactly. I would expect them to start out on the CT side here. It is the favoured side, I think, in the current meta. Also, I think for a team of really strong individuals, it might lend itself to be a little bit easier than trying to orchestrate around on the terrorist side. But we'll see SJ here opting to start out on the CT side. For SJ, we've got Pimp, Freeze, Smoddy, Asilian, and Magisport. And for the German Penta outfit, we've got Mike S, Crystal, Tarsen, Zen, and Tabson. Running out of spawn at the moment. You can see the intent here from the German org is certainly to take those aim jewels. They do have four people with armor. Crystal does have some flashes and even a smoke to support his team as they move towards the A site. But it looks as though Magist is the only one posted up there at the back of that quad box. And he's really committed to the site, given the fact that he's jumping up and down and not much in the way of support. So as the Germans he get ready to bust out this door, Magist boy might need to come up on some, some little magic. You do see Crystal here. He's opened up the door in his really opening up this A-bomb site here as Tarsen is the one to convert onto that first frag. Magist boy, as we said, all on his lonesome there on the side. He has gone down. The bombs shortly will get planted. All of a sudden, ST needs to get that defuse coming in, but they're losing members at the moment. Pimp has gone down. One of their star players, and all of a sudden, it's becoming mission impossible here as ST only have three surviving members. Having said that, though, Moddy, he's just grabbed two headshots, so... Great way to start from Moddy's. He does come through that A main. Asilian, they're catching one off guard as well. So, SK in this three on five, turn it back into a three on two in their favor. Moddy, they're spotting at his third for the round. Asilian with the fourth in the back of the site. And this defuse come in. What a great start there for SK. What a great flank from Moddy, too. Those two headshots clearing out A main and really just pincering the terrorists in the site. Great retake. But of course, Penta get the bomb down. They get that economy going. And, uh, well, we could see some pressure applied maybe in that third round with a force buy. I was actually really surprised to see actually Magisport committing to that A side as he was. It's often quite common that you see teams play that rear take A with perhaps three at B, one at mid, and one at that A truck, opting to just try and perhaps models off the site, delay the plant, and then retake it later on. But he was in the site backing his skills. He was punished as a result uh, without even getting one in that instance. But great work by ST. Moldy in particular with the triple there on that retake. You do see that the T's Magisport gets a little bit of revenge there. Sweet justice as he spans Darson through the door. But they are an eco here, Jim, so business as usual. Well, that's right, he took that frag so quickly. And, of course, as a result of having no armor, he just dropped poor old Tarsen. But they're set up here in this A main. Zen just peeking too much. Pimp taking that frag. Thank you very much. I'll take that. The Famous is doing some work here. And, of course, they are going to eventually get into this A site. Well, they're being completely stopped at the door there. Not even getting out of A main at all. Nice and easy for SK. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of buy here. Yes, it is coming out from... Penta, we are going to see the gun round. It's important to me, though, that Penta really brings some initiative to this round. So far in Counterpit, we've seen them on the terror side struggle a little bit with any sort of intent or purpose. They've almost held back quite defensively, almost the opposite of their CT play. So given the fact that they've invested on this third round, I like to see them make something of it and really attack in force. You can see it's quite a split approach at the moment, so just watching for any potential CT aggression. But CTs themselves, Jim, they've opted for a 2 2 1 setup. Again, only one member in the A site. This time it's Freeze with that AWP. That's right, Freeze is the man that's tasked with holding down that A site. SK are actually focusing a lot of their attention on mid and taking control of that and just leaving Freeze to do work at the site. And I believe the other person sitting is Moddy. So the, the two Swedish veterans, funnily enough, well, sorry, the Swedish veteran in Moddy um, holding that down with, of course, Freeze taking that AWP to the B site or A site. Looks as though it will be an A site that you talk of that they will attack in. See that smoke and flash really helping them make their way into the site at the moment. Mike S just on the lurk, just keep an eye out for any curious CTs, but it will be freezing in the A site. He spots out the first, does take down Zen and really taps on the rest of the team. He's not pushing onto the side and caught in no man's land. Taps and does get one, but it's not going to be enough as he gets traded down a ceiling with a nice double there. And Penta here being punished for really not capitalizing and moving in as one. They got that opening frag. They needed to keep pushing in, but they let go of their W keys and they lost around. Well, that's right. Hesitation got the better of them. Once those smokes were down, they were just caught in no man's land, as you say, in that A site. And I mean, bar the one frag on the person on catwalk, that was it. They got completely stopped in their tracks and that was the end of the round, unfortunately, for Penta back to the drawing board. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, they're going to be on eco this round, which means that you'd expect business as usual. SK would be able to pick up this round. Penta opting to mix things up a little bit and head towards the B side, but I think we spoke about before that round it actually eventuated. They need to be very purposeful and move as a pack, almost that pack mentality, but they seemingly did that at the beginning of the round. Moddy there doing a nice job of cleaning things up. Does get a second, can't quite get the third though. 
but in the end, Tabson's the last alive. But it was almost as though halfway through that round, Jim, as they made their way onto that A site, they almost lost their whereabouts and forgot their purpose and what they were meant to achieve. Well, that's the problem, I guess, with having those smokes, is essentially the CTs will heat their flashes into them knowing that uh, more than likely they are going to hit the uh, Ts with those flashes. So, again, they just got caught out completely, but this uh, that B-Site eco attempt was essentially just feeding Moddy uh, frags all too easily. Yeah, and if there's a player you probably wouldn't want to feed, it is Moddy. Renowned for being an aim star for many in the years, of course, does have a CS 1.6 background, played for Fnatic as well in the early days of Go, and at the moment, he is posted up there on that catwalk in the B-Site, just spawning out for any sort of attention, and perhaps if he waits long enough, he might find some. Full members making their way, and Tabson actually very early on, and does catch Moddy off guard there. Free still a good job to retaliate, but he will need to make that all work at close range, Get it's a second shotgun style as it is a silly and they're to support him. Not expecting three to be there. And Crystal eventually takes him down, but you can see that they are up against it now in this two or three situation and quite trapped at the moment with their presence known. That's right, just that man out there in the catwalk the just boy does a lot of damage, picking up the last two frags, but Fries just standing in Gandalf mode almost, claiming that uh, Penta will, will simply not pass. Yeah, the pace of the game at the moment as well. I just had to catch my breath there for a second. I was actually looking at the time, trying to work out how long those five rounds had gone for. I'm, I'm guessing about five minutes, if that. That's really, really fast. Of course, obviously, Lord Gaben has granted the terrorist teams an extra 10 seconds now to try and make something of it, but Pants are not utilizing that time. Um, and really, I think for a team that is relying on their individuals to make things work. Of course, we mentioned the fact that this German team, they do have a substitute playing for them. They have communication issues, given the fact that Crystal has to call in English. They do have a Dutch player in the form of Mike S, so they can't comm in their native language. I think needing to get off to a strong start was critical for these guys, but what can they do, Jim, to turn things around now? Well, I think for starters, they need to get their heads into the game a little bit. As we've seen, uh, the, the rounds have been very fast-paced so far, not really allowing them a lot of time to think through any sort of situation. So I think maybe just slowing things down a little bit. I know it's not their game style, but at the moment, SK are just getting the better of them. So they need to take a little bit more time to, uh, to plan around what they're doing, essentially. So we'll see and execute on mid here. This I like this. This is a little bit different from Penta, of course. Those Molotovs and grenades will come in and just slow them down a little bit. But if we look at the overlay there, it is going to be an attempted B split if they ever get themselves out of mid. But Asilion is waiting, ready, as Pimp picks up one, looking for the second. He's used all his cold bullets, but that doesn't matter. He's got a 5-7 in hand, picks up two, but he's traded out quite quickly. And they're going to put a lot of pressure on this B site. Zen, straight into the side. That bomb plant should go down without a drop. A worry here is now Freeze left to defend. Well, that is, it is a two on three here for SK, and all of a sudden, given the fact that Fries has naught, this is a little bit more difficult for them. We would have perhaps preferred a rifle in this instance. You can see that Magist Boy is creating that second angle. He is posted up there in the vents, and very, very shortly, he will be coming out of the checkers. So, at the moment, SK working together. Those flashes come in in unison. Magist Boy does do the drop. Fries as well follows it up onto Mike S, and all of a sudden, SK make do with another fantastic retake and make it look a little bit easier than perhaps it was. 6 0 the score currently reads for SK, but. I mean, Penta, they, they found an opening that round. Um, or perhaps by virtue of a few CTs whiffing their shots and a few uncharacteristic misses there in mid. But in any case, they made something of it. They got a plant and were in a strong position there, but couldn't quite convert. Yeah, a bit more of a set execute too, um, which worked in their favour. Uh, obviously, they didn't have the uh, the full complement, only going with pistols there. But I, I believe they should try something very similar. And now on a gun round as a result of getting that plant. And we do see Crystal pick up that orb, more importantly. For Penta, so what can he open up for them? As Moddy pushes his way out into B main, does pick up Mike S nice and early, retreats once he has gained that man advantage for his team, and Penta left the reeling a little bit as SK just reset and remove uh, and reposition amongst the sites. A little bit of damage there done by Tarson onto Magisk Boy in the A site, but now another slow approach from Penta. Yeah, and if you look at the overlay at the moment, you can see off the back of that frag by Moddy, Freeze is actually about to post up in the sunroom towards the B site, gathering so much intel, even though he's not actually seen anyone at the moment. That itself is information. So it's allowing Pimp, Asilian, Moddy, and Magist Boy to focus their attention on the remaining two choke points. And you can see Penta at the moment, they're almost being suffocated, almost funneled towards only one choke point. You can see at the moment they are flashing out mid. And whilst they might think they have a good read on this round or a good opening, 
CT is well over at the moment. You can see Molly just hiding behind that smoke there in the midcom. But Free Swiss spoke about his positioning before, comes into good use, and it's the first, what's the second? Can't quite convert there, so just missing his shot costs himself that his life in that instance. But given the fact that he was so advanced towards that B main, it does allow his teammates that opportunity to rotate back to the B site before the T's get there, but Crystal up to the challenge. Gets the drop on Monty. Again, they've got an opening here, three on two. Magisk Boy does find the frag there onto Tabson and just sets up this two versus two. Crystal just holding on to that orb still is sitting in B main and does know that Magisk Boy has made his way through to the checkers. In the meantime, poor old Pimp is sitting up and that Molotov will come in and just put a lot of pressure on Tarson if uh, anything just forcing away from those bomb boxes. Crystal actually misses his shot. Tarson has a lot of work to do here. Magisk Boy picks up one. Tarson finds the second, but uh, Pimp should get this diffused quite easily and should be able to reclaim that orb as there should be one within arm's reach. I just want to point out how sick that teamwork was from SK. This is the third time now in seven rounds. If we take a look at the scoreboard, you can see the first, and then obviously the sixth and seventh rounds, their win have come by a defuse. But even in that instance, another two on three, you could actually see Freeze flash in, but just boy stepping out after the flash. Did a great job of navigating the AWP. He's actually shoulder peeking towards the B main, trying to get Crystal to fire that AWP bullet without really having a legitimate shot at Magist Boy. Really, really great play. And I think it just goes to throw the strength of individuals down this SK roster at the moment. And they're really making mince meat of Team Penta. You can see they are heading towards the B side gym. They have invested this round. It looks as though Moddy up on the catwalk this time, a little bit more prepared, not wanting to get caught off guard like we saw earlier on. But having said that, Zen, the Finnish import for this team, the substitute for tonight, does find a gap in that smoke and punishes him anyway. Moddy won't be happy with that, but Pimp neither will be as he gets taken down and all of a sudden it's left up to Asilian, the in-game leader, does grab two, but again, he's down three on two, familiar territory, Jim, we have been here before. Well, that's right, and uh, well, this retake is going to be tested again by SK. Majisquo needing to team up now with Freeze to, to make something happen. That Molotov, it doesn't have the desired effect. In fact, it's only burning the uh, the armory of guns that sit on that wall. It's now Majisquo needs to find that first frag, otherwise they may be forced to save here. He is hunting. These pop flashes will come in and they are about to step onto the site. Does enter into a duel with Mike S and of course doesn't land too much damage there. This round should go the way of Penta and SK will be looking to save those guns. Crystal will make his way out B main and just ensure that AWP lives to fight another day. Penta get that first round on the board and a good change here from Penta. And important that they continue with this momentum. Well, yeah, the change, to be honest, was just the fact that they actually managed to hold a post-plant situation. Um, we were then joking about the fact that really SK had been doing a fantastic work exhibiting all their teamwork and getting those retakes to work for them. But Panzer fortunately won around which should have been theirs. Third time lucky for them as it was, eventually making that big hit work. Curious to see what they do now though. You can see that SK off the back of losing that round, they actually mixed things up a bit. Pimp has that open hand. Now, he did open Dignitas, but it wasn't his preferred gun. He felt that it was stifling his gameplay. So we'll see what he can do with it in this instance. Very slow to start this round here, Jim, from Penta. Yeah, interesting double orb set up running in from SK. It is a, a massive financial commitment to try and run that double orb set up, but clearly they feel something just needs to be tweaked here. As Penta regroup around that mid boost, they will look to get some mid control with that late boost coming out. And flashes will come out. Tabson is about to come face to face with the Cillian. Just pops around the corner, says hello, grabs a frag. Magisk Boy is there to trade, so good work already from SK. Finding the second Magisk Boy, repositioning himself there, supported well by Motti, so good teamwork here from, from SK. It really is a uh, centerpiece of their game, but in the meantime, Crystal's actually opened up the A site. Two quick frags, but not supported well by his teammate because unfortunately Mike S had to travel back to get that bomb. Yeah, some sick trade for Odin coming in from SK. Really, I think, bringing their A game to tonight's match. You can see one on two here for Mike S. This is so crucial here for his team's chances because if he was to lose this round, potentially that would reset the team Penta economy. So Mike Yes needs to pull a rat above the hat. Perhaps a little bit of magic for himself. He can see he's making his way towards the A main. And from a CT perspective, we actually won't find too much of a challenge just yet. You can see that Moddy is playing very defensively towards that truck, but not crucially, not spotting towards A, actually giving up that plant banking on their retake abilities. You can see that Mike S at the moment just looking for a bit of a cheap frag. Walking around the highway, checking out trucks. He's a little bit surprised, I think, given the fact that there's no members of SK there, but in the end, he will get spotted out. Lucky put down that smoke, but Pimp frags him in any case. But you can see the intent there from Mike S. I don't fault him for that. I think it was just much smarter play from SK to be very, very passive, deliberately not take those 1v1 jewels. That's all right. He uh, must have thought he was half a chance for a plant there if, after he missed the first shot, but he didn't make the mistake the second time, Pimp. Because now we see 
Oh, I guess worst possible scenario here for Penta. They didn't get that plan in that round. They have had their economy reset. And it looks to be that they're concentrating on A main here as uh, a few set smokes will come in. Obviously, the objective is to get that bomb down and re restart their economy. Yeah, they're up against it at the moment. Uh, I think it goes without saying. I mean, if this was their map choice, I think they're going to be a little bit shocked more than anything that the situation that they now find themselves in. 8-1 down, they are on an eco. They are moving towards their side. They do have a few flashes and smokes to try and aid their way into the bomb side, but it's not working for them so far. But Jisk Boy is absolutely on fire tonight. He's got two. These are probably two of his more easy frags of the night so far, but he's looking to add to the tally. But in the end, Tristel launches himself and Tarsen doing a good job there of getting one for himself. But... Still all to do. Has recovered the orb though, but the holy hand grenade says otherwise as Monty seals the deal. 9-1 SK. Looking strong. They are looking very strong, and at the moment, Penta don't really seem to have an answer other than holding those bomb plants, well, the, the few and far between that they managed to get. And 9-1 the score. We will see again another gun round coming out here. More importantly, Crystal again attempting with that orb. So I think what we've seen from them so far, we in the uh, the other matches have been quite successful is usually Mike S is the one to actually or well Crystal concentrates on their in-game leadership role. Slitten though picks up a cheap frag before he's traded out by Crystal in the B main. So already going down to a four versus four in this round. But uh, Penta just slowing it down a little bit now and reasserting themselves across the uh, the map. That persistent aggression there from SK, we've seen multiple occasions this map. Good work there by Zen getting that frag onto Friss. That aggression from the CTs pushing that B side, and again it gets to the first frag. But just boy doing a good job of converting onto Zen, who was charging into A on his own, so quite strange to see that. We talked about the need for teamwork in this instance, and Crystal there just out positioning Pimp, not expecting to have to check T spawn quite rightly, I think, given the fact that there was only a minute left on the clock. But in any case, after all the fragging has gone down, we now find ourselves in a three on one. All left up to Monty, but he is punished and put to death in the end. 9 2. Penta get back on the board, but even in that round, Jim, it still seems in hindsight to be a very chaotic round from Penta's perspective. It's hard to pick out what worked for them. They lost that first duel in the B main. Zen doing a good job potentially of catching Frisoft up, but it was just a bit of a mix smash sort of effort. Well, at the moment, Penta have done enough to force SK onto a bit of an eco. So if you look at the money there, they are a bit of an all sorts. They're a bit all over the place, so they're just going to have to reset things. But look at this. They've actually bought into this round. They've supported Moddy and Pimp, the two, uh, I guess, more uh, well-off members of the team, and it's paying off so far. Moddy finding that first frag. He's not traded out by Penta, but they're going to hit this B site. Moddy's the only one defending it. Well, for the time being anyway, but Asilian is posted up quite close to those vents, but at the moment his attention is distracted by one member there in the warehouse in the form of Tarson. And Tarson doing a good job at the moment of just making sure that the CTs can't rotate. Does get a double. Great work there by the young freighter, of course. Totus descent, but is playing for this German team in this instance. Penta looking strong at the moment. They do find themselves in a four on three situation, but they haven't yet dropped that bomb into the site. The bomb's actually backed off. So whilst Crystal and both Mike S are in the site at the moment, Crystal showing how low his sensitivity must be as he swivels and struggles to this crosshair, looking back towards the vent. Uh, they are trying to make their way towards B, but the CTs, I think, are getting a grip of what's happening at the moment, and Moddy doing a good job there of landing that grenade. All of a sudden, though, as Tarson gets his third for the round, it looks as though it will be Mission Impossible here. This should be a round going the way Penta. Well, do you believe in magic? Because Magisk Boy is still alive and might be able to wield a little bit of his power here and try and do some damage. As he does pick up that one B onto Zen, that is absolutely... Phenomenal from him, but needs two more frags if they're going to win this round, of course. More importantly, he does not have a kit, so that diffuse time is the full 10 seconds. Does find a second one, B, on Tartan. Not able to find the third. Mike S ensures that he doesn't win that round. More importantly, Penta find their third round of this half. This kid is insane. Only 17 years old. He really came out of nowhere and had his breakthrough performance, obviously, at the Fragbite Masters Season 5 Land Finals. Um, he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the world's best teams in the likes of Fnatic and Titan, held his own and then some, and really just a pure ball of talent in this play. You can't wait to see what he has in the future. Nearly turned that 1v3 madness into a winnable situation. But again, Jim, as you said, of virtue of forcing that previous round, SK now have to commit to a full eco. And this is just slowly, starting to open the door up for Penta. Whilst it feels in the context of this half that very much SK have been in control, been in charge of the tempo, had their way. All of a sudden, Penta have now actually strung what should be three rounds together in a row here and starting to get back some momentum of their own. They are. And 
This is as a result of putting a lot of pressure on SK's economy. That CT economy can be very tough to maintain, let alone uh, get going at times. But they've done enough in those those close rounds, those retakes, forcing uh, Penta, sorry, should I say SK, to rebuy, uh, surviving only at times with two members left in their team. So they have done enough to whittle away at that CT economy and as a result, force a few Ecos. Interesting decision though to buy into that last round. Um, but nonetheless, they're back on a gun round here. Finally, getting on top of their money. Well, this is crucial to me. I think in SK, I think the score one's a bit misleading. I think they actually really need to win this round to try and hold this German momentum at the moment. But Crystal, the in-game leader, does get the entry fray there and taking down the danger man before Magist Boys. So all of a sudden, Penta starting to have their way. You can see that Crystal has backed off. We'll boost Mike up there into mid so that he can very shortly take that pick towards that Z connector. But from a CT perspective now, they're almost left scrambling no men's land. They've got Friss on A, a ceiling in mid. At least they had a ceiling in mid. But the CT defense is Pimps also rotating between both sides at the moment. So they're not expecting where these Germans are actually going to be attacking at the moment. And as a result, they don't have the numbers there to meet them when they do commit to the sides. You can see that Tarson is very well positioned here towards that angle. Just listening for noise. You can see him looking into the wall, just trying to make sure that that headphone directional sound is on point and you can see that actually for the SK sake Jim they've actually got two members there in A that they have though so potentially they could make a good read here as we do see on the overlay both members that were at B for Penta are going to make their way towards A so they are going to go towards the uh, slightly uh, <laughs> more defended side but well Moddy is actually going to back up his Two teammates potentially here. No, he's just sitting in limbo. I like this though. I know that threats the NIP coach is a big proponent of in these three on five situations as a CT to stack and gamble aside. It'd be so hard to hold otherwise. We do see Mike S there. Does get the spot on one member, does take down Frizz. Now they should commit to the side. Tarson does a great job there of actually getting that second frag. And the third. Great work there. That is another round going Penta's way. 9 5. You can just tell now all of a sudden the momentum has shifted. It looks as though SK, they'll be reeling to buy into this last round now. Ever so important that they do try and get something going their way as we move towards what will be the second decisive path. Now, what I like from Penta here is the fact that they've actually benefited from slowing things down. They've been able to get that first pick into round. Sometimes it's only been a trade, but nonetheless, they've actually slowed down from what was a very fast and furious start to the, uh, the half and capitalized there as we see Tabson take down Asylian, but just slowing things down has really worked in their favor because they were simply just going hell for bent or on those sites and it wasn't really working in their favor. But what we haven't seen slow down is also that aggression from SK. Whilst it was working so well for them early in the half, getting the drop on the terrorist all over the different choke points in the map, they persisted with this pushing and getting caught off pushing one at a time. In this round, it was a Cillian. In the previous round, it was Magist Boy. I think it was an A main as Crystal took him off. So I think Pants are really just reaping the rewards at the moment of holding back, as you say, and just waiting for SK to come into their crosses. That's it. That's all they've had to do, quite simply put. You see a little bit of teamwork here from uh, SK Gaming is Pimp just spots out one in mid, but uh, that doesn't really give him too much information as to what's going on. Wadi is just content to sit behind the box there in B main. And the terrorists are doing a really good job of just masking any information that the uh, counter terrorists in SK Gaming can get. But as we see here, they are going to sell three towards that B or that A site with the two remaining making their way towards B. Wadi going to be a key figure in this round is uh, Mike S does find him out there on the B site. The lone defender has gone down and, uh, well, Pimp should get flanked here as well because uh, Tabson makes his way to the truck. That is exactly how things go down and finds the second and his third for the round. Reese goes down, 9-6 to score and good comeback from uh, SK Gaming. That is, I say, Penta. Yeah, SK Gaming. Oh, I think they're struggling. They've lost the last five rounds. but They lost, yeah, lost a lot of momentum. That is massive, though, from Penta. Not just the fact that they've now managed to win five rounds in a row, but more importantly, in the context, they were very, very scratchy at the start. They were going ever so quickly. We commented about the fact that the rounds were flying past, but they found a way. This mixed team, they don't even have a confirmed fifth for their team. It's Zen who's substituting tonight. It's really wrestled that momentum and really trust in their game and back themselves. And at the moment, they're doing a fantastic job here. They will move on to the CT side, perhaps the favoured side, and they'll need to defend against an all-out B attack as that flash will lead the way in as SK now swarm onto the side. Tarson spots them out. He will have a smoke to contend with though blocking off his vision but you can see this fast retake coming in here through B main and Crystal doing a fantastic job. They're really 
exploiting that pace, getting that freight onto a ceiling. Friss is there to provide some sort of resistance. He has got his second for the round, but there's a third member coming from B-Man. I'm not sure if he's aware, and it's really forced Magisport to go the aggressor here towards the B-Man, just trying to get some map territory of his own. He's got one, but take down, taken down by Zen in the end. All of a sudden, Mike S and Zen are the last two remaining surviving members for his team. It is a two-on-two -two here, Penta. We saw how well ST were able to execute their retakes in the first half. What can Penta do in this similar situation? Mike S now has one to contend with. Doesn't have a tit. Timer ticking away. Moddy there doing a great job. Just dancing around the box and the jumping burst. We'll get it done in the end. 10-6 SK. Very, very dicey round though. That could have gone either way. Yeah, look, I was starting to believe Penta could do it there. But of course, that trading from Friss was quite key. Zen actually had a kit entering that site. So if that two versus two went down a little bit differently, um, we could have seen a, a Penta defuse coming in. But nonetheless, great work from SK. And they secure the pistol round. Penta, though, forced up a few pistols, one grenade, and not really too much else to write home about. But nonetheless, they are sending numbers through mid here. And they should come to a head. Any moment now, as we just wipe onto first, looks for the second. Great spray transfer from him as he uh, does take down the first two. But uh, Penta just forced to back off a little bit here because they don't have the numbers to take these fights. There's Mike S just doing a little bit of investig uh, investigatory work. Just wipe onto his third for the round. And the fourth. So he's already making dank bank with that SMG bonus. And poor old Mike S is just sitting in sandbags wondering what on earth went down in that round. He's the last member of his team left. Not much is going to come up this round. He just has a P2K, so perhaps just trying to find an exit frag or two. But in the end, it will be Friss who does find him out and takes a little while to convert. Eventually, he gets that frag onto him, though. Never really in danger. You can see that he still had 100 points of health in the end. But good work by SK, keeping that round quite clean. I was really actually surprised and impressed by how well they need to actually move out mid with force there on the terrace side. Sometimes it can be quite dicey, um, especially when there's a lot of CT presence getting shown, particularly towards that short slash highway box. So great work there by Estate getting those two frags and then just having their pit of sights. We saw them going B in the end. Nice round. And we do see Penta stacking that B site. They are going to send some members through. This boost over the, uh, the smoke could pay some dividends here. There's... Uh, SK make their way out mid, but Cillian recognises that uh, there could be a boost going on in mid. And this is exactly where they could run into trouble. That boost actually pays dividends for them. But uh, Freeze is on cleanup duty. Just takes out the mop and bucket into the vent there. And the vents are now clean. And that bomb will be collected. And they will head towards this B site where the last two remaining members of Penta are. Ah, great spray there from Moddy. Just finding the last two frags. And keeping the round relatively clean for SK Gaming as they head into this crucial gun round. Yeah, now this is business time for Penta. They do have two orbs in hand. We suggested that they do like to get the both Mike and Crystal uh, using that sniper rifle. They're both very proficient at it. Gives a lot of options and versatility to a team, but you can see that they've invested everything that they have into this round. So it's so important from a Penta perspective that they not just win this round, but they keep those orbs in hand as the timer does expire in the end. You can see Mike has taken his towards B. Misses his shot though and is punished. He's down to 31 points of health and he's almost caught in between two lines as to wanting to keep fighting and wanting to retreat. In the end, he does manage it back to the side with 20 points of health left, but a lot of pressure on his shoulders now as the T's do have control of that checkers room area, creating two choke points for the CTs to really contend with in that B bomb site. Tarson trying his luck there off the back of some good flashing from Mike S. Takes down two in the checkers room. Can he get the third? Not quite, it seems, as Moddy gets away with six points of health, eventually getting that frag, but a great individual piece of teamwork really opened up that round, and Mike S doing his best he possibly can to really solidify it. He does get two with the orb. In the end, the Gist Boy will take him down, but that's enough. Penta win that round, and crucially, Tabson will be there to recover that AWP as well. So that's what we said needed to happen. They needed to win the round and keep those two AWPs. Mission mm -hmm. achieved. Oh, well, I thought SK were doing a brilliant job of bullying Mike S out of that checker room, but somehow he managed to get out with his life and, uh, well, go on to, to make his mark on the round. But uh, great, uh, great little flash, a pop flash into the checker room, allowed them to pick up two easy frags and... Now we see just uh, potentially um, be the last gun round coming out from SK before they're forced to eco again. Yeah, I mean, one flash is actually gifted. I think it was Tarson in that instance, two frags. A fantastic piece of teamwork, as you said. Mike is showing that um, despite having that all, it was a worthwhile investment to get that utility in hand. You can see in this round, SK, they can obviously afford to buy and 
quite a split approach. Three members towards that A site, quite close by at the moment, and two lurking towards B with that bomb in hand. So at least the start of this round looks as though potentially it had an A fake in mind. But as the members move their way back here on the terrorist side, back towards mid, all of a sudden it looks as though mid might be the point of attack. You can see the Penta for their sake. They've only got Tabson there at the moment, and he is positioned in the highway. Does have an M4A4, and I think he'll be going up against Freeze's Orb, so that quite, it could be a quite difficult battle for him. That's right, and now the round is on the timer. They are hitting mid as we see members jump out as Friss. Looks that first pick does find it there onto Tabson, and they are making their way out mid, and that bomb has made its way, more importantly, through the B main, and will look to get into B as they now make their way into the vent. Two members of Penta are ready and waiting. They will be joined by a third momentarily as now the smokes and flashes should come in. That Molotov does a great job of just stemming things momentarily. It's Tarson does get into the site, but he is taken down quite quickly as Mike S is holding strong on the site with that AWP. Freeze, as we said, his matchup, that equal number in the AWP does uh, come out. The victor there is Crystal, unfortunately, misses his shot and nearly tries to save the AWP, catapulting it down that ramp to his teammate, but uh, he's tasked, <laughs> tasked with uh, trying to save it. Unfortunately, only finds one frag before he is traded out quite quickly. 13-7 a score. And uh, that CT economy is very, very shaking looking at that money. Now, this is one of those consequences that we talked about in terms of buying that double orb setup in that first gun round. Whilst three members actually survived the previous round for CTs, given the fact that two had bought the orbs, it really leaves them strapped for cash now off the back of losing that one round. That's all it took for their economy to reset. So 13-7, you can see that pens are just on the pistols at the moment. And really, even if they do lose this round, they're still going to be strapped for cash trying to buy into the next. So... SK definitely with the upper hand at the moment. Freeze in particular, I mean, he's had quite a quiet game so far, but the two or three frags in which he picked up that round were impact frags. He opened up mid, then he opened up the B site, making those key orb shots when it counts. A great job by the really experienced Counter-Strike 1.6 veteran. Yeah, you said he was going to be key in this matchup, and he's made his mark at the right time as well for SK Gaming. So, of course, Majisk Boy is happily floating along, finding those frags. The Cillian doing a good job on his own, but... Uh, they're just dismantling this eco round push from uh, Penta. Zen, the one, he's the only one that's got uh, some form of investment in this round, obviously, with that 5 7 and armor. And, uh, well, Pimp will be looking to find him very, very shortly. And he does go down that uh, $1,000. Unfortunately, we'll not see the light of day. Just tabs him to contend with, and, well, he's a long way away. But see, buying that 5 7 armor makes no sense to me. It means that he's now lived in a situation where he has $4,400. But had he not invested in the previous round into that pistol and armor, he'd actually be dropping one of his teammates an AWP. We've said that Mike S and Crystal really rely heavily on that AWP to get the job done, and as a result of him buying really with his teammates not following his suit, not having much chance of winning the round, all of a sudden it's left them in a compromised position now where they're having to deal with M4A falls or for masses at worst. Well, geez, okay. Tapson actually gets tagged. Okay. Through mid there, a little bit of a spam slot, but expert timing coming in as uh, Moddy. Gets popped by perfectly into B main, but uh, Tarson somehow finds the collateral, the double frag there to, to swing things back slightly in their favour. But Tabson is only on 15 hit points as now SK move their way towards this A site. That's right, they are in a three on three situation here, and Crystal is getting pinched. He's trying to actually become the aggressor in that instance. Good little pop flash there through the smoke, but that smoke is dissipating, so you can see he does need to retreat, and he is caught. There's a little world of pain coming out in from both sides. Freeze gets the job done, but there's one more to contend with. You can see how low Tabson is, though, so he needs to at least double it up in this instance. Tarson is screaming to get in there as soon as he can to try and provide his teammates some sort of assistance, and he does more than that. Gets the frag spots out Freeze as well, and in the end, Freeze there with connecting through the smoke. So not for the first time shooting through an obstacle, showing that he can get the job done, really coming to life here at the end of this half and the end of this match, so to speak. SK now have eight match points. Well, Fruis just proving that physical objects are no obstacle for him. That wall bang at the start of the round really just setting them up because leaving, um, I think it was Tarson on, or Tabson on 15 HP. Absolute mayhem. Absolutely insane. Oh, dear. Well, in any case, we do see that's going to be a really uphill battle, goes without saying. SK now, I mean, they've invested everything that they can into this round. Unfortunately for them, it just means that Tarson is the lone man with the rifle. His teammates do have pistols in hand trying to support him, and they've at least got some information as they do just flash their way into B main. But having said that, Mike S, the man in which we spoke about just moments ago, does get taken down. So Tarson is forced to retreat back to where he started, heads back towards B main, and Pimp is there to greet him in the most unkind of fashions as he rips his head off. And all of a sudden, SK now have complete control of this map. 
five on three. They will swarm into the B side, and surely this will signal the end here for Penta, at least on their chances here of success on the first map. Frizz does manage to tag down Thompson, but doesn't quite convert on the first, does on the second. Good work by him. And it looks as though this will be SK claiming the victory here on the first map. It was Penta's choice. Crystal with it all to do, and it's going to prove too much to do in this instance. You can see the pimp wanting to really stomp him into the ground. I thought he was trying to jump into his head there and pound him away, but in the end, Crystal just stalling, I think. The inevitable will have to wait a little bit longer until he decides to take the battle. SK doing a good job at the moment, of spending that utility which they did save, and mean that we have to wait a few extra seconds. Crystal's not doing us any favours as he rotates between b -Lower and Heaven. Well, I think we must remind people that this was Penta's pick. And uh, as, well, Crystal does find two, Frag. Not able to find the second or the third as, um, oh, sorry, the fourth Frag there to win the round. But that was Penta's pick.